Yes, well, we are entering a cloudy start to the week here. There's your view from the Dow. Clouds even out in the central portions of the gorge, which tends to see a lot of sunshine at this point in the year. There are two things people always say to me when they find out I'm a meteorology major. The first one? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? But more importantly, the second one. Hey, Steve. What's that cloud? You think you're so good? Name that cloud. And to be honest, I couldn't name half the clouds maybe a year ago, which is why I decided to put together the definitive cloud identification masterclass. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to annoy all your friends and family by pointing to the sky and shouting six syllable words. Let's go. Cloud names are mainly based on their appearance and their altitude. And oftentimes, prefixes and root words are sort of smashed together to describe a cloud that has a combination of features. So once you understand the main cloud types, it all starts to make more sense. Let's start at the very bottom with stratus. Stratus clouds are uniform, featureless, blanketing, low-level clouds that typically make the sky gray. They typically occur below 7,000 feet. Fog is actually a stratus cloud that's in contact with the ground. They form when an entire horizontal layer of warm air slowly rises and condenses. And because of this, they aren't associated with severe weather. Sure, it might look a bit apocalyptic out there, but chances are if you climb up a few thousand feet above the clouds, you'll find a beautiful sunshine. The worst that can happen with plain stratus is some light rain or snow. The biggest takeaway here is that stratus means blanketing. Cumulus clouds are typically puffy like a cotton ball with a flat, dark base. They occur at lower levels between 1,000 and 7,000 feet. They can appear both clustered or isolated and come in many different forms. They form when isolated pockets of warm air are heated by the Earth's surface and begin to rise and condense. The process of condensation itself releases energy in the form of latent heat, and this energy then heats the air, causing it to rise further, creating a feedback loop. It's part of the reason why cumulus clouds can explode into cumulonimbus clouds, which is the first subtype we're going to talk about. The suffix nimbus means rainy cloud in Latin, so likewise stratonimbus and cumulonimbus both basically mean stratus and cumulus but with rain. Cumulus clouds are formed by aggressive rising air called an updraft. They start off as a cumulus cloud and through continuously rising air and condensation they explode upward. Some of them hit the tropopause and spread outward into a flat anvil. So I'm about to use the term air parcel and that basically means I'm taking an imaginary cube of air in the atmosphere, and I'm gonna label it, I'm gonna track where it goes, I'm gonna figure out its temperature and other atmospheric properties. The reason why a parcel of air that is warmer than the environment can rise to begin with is because it's less dense. Below the tropopause, temperatures decrease with height, so an air parcel that is warmer than the environment continues to rise because the environment keeps getting colder, so they never actually equal the same temperature. But at the tropopause, the temperature stays the same with height, so the air parcel that has risen to that point eventually cools to the temperature surrounding it and stops rising. That's why the top of a very large cumulonimbus cloud spreads out like an anvil. As for the weather associated with cumulonimbus clouds, severe thunderstorms, supercells, tornado, torrential rainfall, lightning, all the good stuff. We'll get into those mechanisms in another video. The biggest takeaway here is that cumulus clouds are puffy like a cotton ball with a flat, dark base. Cirrus clouds are thin, wispy, beautiful ice crystal clouds that occur between 15,000 and 45,000 feet. They form via deposition, which is when water vapor deposits onto particles and instantly freezes and forms ice, skipping the liquid phase. They are known for their beautiful optical phenomena like halos around the sun, iridescence, and sun dogs, all formed by the ice crystals. Cirrus clouds are also observed on other planets like Mars and Neptune. When cirrus clouds become very dense and clustered, thus blanketing the sky, they are called cirrostratus. These are formed when moist air is lifted to a very high altitude, typically ahead of a warm front. If you see cirrostratus rolling in, you can probably expect rain later in the day. Similarly, cirrocumulus clouds can indicate that precipitation might be on the way. They are formed due to rising air at high altitudes, indicating instability very far above the ground. They look like tiny puffy ripples and are distinguishable from regular cirrus and cumulus. They dissipate over time into regular cirrus clouds. So we have stratus, blanketing and featureless, formed by slow rising sheets of warm air. Cumulus, puffy like a cotton ball, formed by pockets of rising air. And cirrus, high level wispy ice crystal clouds. Now for everything in between. 
The cloud prefix alto means mid-level clouds, so naturally alto cumulus clouds mean mid-level puffy cumulus clouds between 7,000 and 23,000 feet. This variety of cumulus clouds doesn't have a dark base or produce precipitation. Alto cumulus are usually too high and too shallow to produce any rain. They might appear in small clusters or produce lawn ripples that stretch for hundreds of miles. They are usually a sign of instability that may lead to thunderstorm development later in the afternoon. Alto stratus is a mid-level blanketing stratus cloud. It can be featureless, leaving the sky a bright gray color, or it can have ripples due to the wind changing speeds and direction with height, also called wind shear. The sun might shine through this type of cloud if they form a thin enough layer. Altostratus undulatus is one of the prettiest forms of this cloud with its smooth wave-like features. If altostratus are thick enough, they become nimbostratus and produce rain. This is actually the main way that nimbostratus are produced. It's important to know that many of these cloud types can occur simultaneously. As a warm front and area of low pressure approach, you might see cirrus slowly thickening to cirrostratus, which slowly lowers to altostratus with a few cumulus in between, and then slowly lowering to stratus and then nimbostratus with light to moderate rainfall. Cloud types are instantaneous and always morphing. And that's it for the 12 basic cloud types. There are many more subcategories that really get into depth, but I don't want to put too much information into a single video. Hopefully you'll be able to identify clouds the next time you're stuck in traffic. Subscribe, like, comment for a part two. See you guys next week. There are no Minecraft references in this video.